He's here. Well, what are you waiting for? Jack, do you know how I managed? To stay mayor for so long? Oh yeah, I know. Is that what you wanted to talk about? <laughs> no, no. No, no, Jack, it's not that. I've stayed in my position because at the very beginning of my career, I learned an important rule. If someone, anyone, friend or enemy, if they want something bad enough, you can hook them with it. I know just what you mean. What does Jack Boyd want? A good pension? Doubtful. <laughs> Half a million dollars. I think that whole nonsense is a myth. The others might think that you just want a paltry sum of money and, and you'll walk away. I think, no, I'm sure of it. You want what you've always wanted to remain the chief of police, and only I can give that to you. You are to lead a special operation against Chaffee. I want your team to come down like a hammer on his stinking restaurant. I want you to personally be there and stand in front of the cameras, and I want this fairy shot during his arrest, a dozen bullets at least. I want to see his mutilated body all over the airwaves. I expect a perfectly planned operation. And if you keep me happy, you'll keep your job for another year and a half. <clears throat> uh, I think... I think we have an agreement, huh? Not a year and a half, Mr. Rogers. For the rest of my life. <clears throat> you think you can dictate terms, Jack? Yeah. Because if someone wants something bad enough, you can hook them with it. I think we have an agreement.
Mr. Boyd, there's some armed men on the floor. Uh, Mr. Boyd, there's a lot of them. I didn't catch that. Say again? Excuse me, Mr. Boyd. It seems I accidentally frightened your secretary. Ah, they published these stories in a book? <laughs> My grandfather read me these stories from the old newspapers whenever I was ill. Uh, as a child, I was often ill, several times a year. And you know what, Mr. Boyd? You're no Bobby Flash. I am aware of that. No, no, no. I, I mean it as a compliment. You, you want to clean up all the crime in Freeburg, right? Or so I dreamed, once upon a time. Do you know why you failed, Mr. Boyd? Do you know why Bobby Flash always wins? Because when you're surrounded by cartoon criminals, the only way to win is to become a cartoon cop. <laughs> you're no cartoon, Mr. Boyd. You suffer too much. You have too many doubts, too much fear, too much internal conflict. Maybe that's why the people of this city forgive all your mistakes. Because you seem like a real human being. If Bobby Flash made a mistake, we'd never forgive him. From Bobby Flash, we want cold, calculated perfection. And this is why I've decided that I don't mind if you keep your job. What, have you abandoned your insane plan to storm the city hall? You think it insane? To solve all my problems in a single stroke? Assuming, of course, that we're properly prepared. Yeah, let's say we do burn City Hall to the ground. And kill Rogers. What next? You simply walk into the smoke-filled room and take a seat in his smoldering chair? <laughs> no, Mr. Boyd. I've been preparing for a year for what happens next. I'll give the prosecutor's office an impressive folder with compromising evidence against Rogers. Information about how he suppressed his political adversaries, finally lost his mind, and plotted to rain blood on the streets of Freeburg. Of course, Troy Starr, faithful City Hall employee that he is, will easily confirm all of this. At the same time, my dear Jordan will finally decide to break her silence and tell everyone how that fool Rogers threatened her, forced her to kill all the victims of his sexual violence to ensure their unpleasant stories would never come to light. Of course, everyone will understand that we didn't have time for formal complaints. The night before Mayor Rogers' private security detail would plunge the city into chaos, our valiant police chief, Jack Boyd, made the difficult decision to arrest the mayor of Freeburg. 
Unfortunately, Rogers descended into delusion and engaged in a shootout with the police, which ended in his death. We'll have to call an early election to replace the mayor, and of course, it won't be too difficult to win the election fairly. And then? You know, Mr. Boyd, most of the facts that I collected in Rogers' file are quite true. Anyone who reads through the mountain of evidence would have no doubt that this man was the most vile person in the world. Murderer? A rapist? Thief? Racist? Sexist? Are, are you a sexist, Mr. Boyd? I'm sorry? Are you a sexist, Mr. Boyd? Or perhaps racist? I try not to be. That's it. I as well. I as well. Although I have long been known under a revolutionary pseudonym, I myself am no revolutionary. I believe in evolution. I am convinced that a city which offers such broad support for racist gangs, a, a city where people cheer as feminist protests are suppressed, a city which for decades has tolerated corrupt officials, I, I say this city has no interest in a mayor who unconditionally stands for freedom, equality, and the rule of law. Not yet. But perhaps they are ready for a mayor who tries to stand for freedom, equality, and the rule of law. At least when the situation allows it. That's why you're so popular, Mr. Boyd. The city is ready for people like you and me. For people who are ready to make compromises. I'm counting on you, Mr. Boyd. And, uh, when will they be ready? I beg your pardon? You said that the city isn't ready for a mayor who stands for freedom, equality, and the rule of law. When will they be ready? Who decides when they're ready? I'll decide.